What we're doing here is we're just trying to evaluate this expression, okay? You've got a trig function, then you have its inverse trig function, and kind of what we've been talking about when we first introduced this is inverse functions are meant to undo. They're meant to uh, sort of invert, hence inverse, whatever operation is the inverse function, right? So you kind of would expect, oh, if you have a number like, say, 5, and you square it, you get 25, and then you take the square root, which brings you back to 5, right? So you're like, oh, okay, you do the operation, you do its inverse, and you land back where you started. However, we already know from an example like that, while the square root of 5 squared is, sure enough, equal to 5, that doesn't always work out so neatly, does it? Sometimes, for instance, if you take a number and then you apply an operation, a function rather, and then apply its inverse, you do not land back where you started. Yeah, does that make sense? In fact, you're like, oh, that's the opposite of what I wanted. Why is that? What is the problem that this is okay with? You do a function and it's inverse and you land back, but then sometimes you do something else and you don't land back there. I want you to have a think. Can anyone tell me what the issue is? Let me nudge you in the right direction, but I'm not going to tell you an answer. I'm going to look for you guys to help me out here. It really has to do with this guy. Do you remember when we were talking about this function? We drew it, right? Erica, what do you think? Okay, so we've talked a lot like from earlier years about when you have a quadratic equation and when you have like a plus or minus solution from it, right? Now this is not a quadratic equation, it's the square root of something, okay? And so the square root doesn't have a plus or minus attached to it, right? It's a function. One of the things about functions is you put one value in and you get how many values out? If it's a function. You get one. That's what makes it a function as opposed to a, what's it called? Sometimes you can put one value in and get more. We call them a relation, right? We are talking about inverse functions, not inverse relations, okay? Now, more specifically, the issue is that this guy here, we restrict it, right? It only has a particular range. What is the range of the square root function? Like, you can think about what it looks like, right? What does the graph look like? There it is. What's the, you can tell me what the range, just look at the picture. The range is, it's going to be greater than or equal to zero. Does that make sense? So the range here is greater than or equal to zero, which is why it will never output a value like negative five. Okay? Now let's come all the way over here to our inverse trig functions. Okay? This guy here, like the square root function, it has a range. What is the range of 10 inverse? I think I heard it. So again, you can think of the picture, right? There's the picture. That's what tan inverse looks like. We've seen this before now. And it goes from negative pi on 2 all the way up to pi on 2, right? Um, it's very similar to the range of sine inverse with one crucial difference. Negative pi on 2 to pi on 2, if this is the y-axis, right? The difference between tan inverse and sine inverse is that, well, can I get to these asymptotes? Can I ever reach there? And the answer is no. So I've got the boundary is excluded, whereas with sine inverse you have, what do you have at the ends of the sine inverse graph? What do you put there? What do you draw? You draw a, a closed, a filled circle, right? Which means you can actually get to negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. Okay, so now we're starting to get the issue, right? There is a range restriction on tan inverse, just like there is a range restriction on the square root function, right? And this guy here, 5 pi on 6, where is 5 pi on 6? It's, um, it's not in this range, is it? Uh, there's pi on 2, which is 90 degrees. 5 pi on 6 is how many degrees? Think, think. We've got to get better at this. You've got to be able to convert back and forth in your head. That's 150 degrees. Yeah, you're like, whoop, no, I'm way up here. Okay, so you see the problem, right? So that's firstly the reason why there's a discrepancy. Here, let me think you, help you think about a way to approach this, which is um, it's a bit more visual than using the quadrants. So would you pick up your, um, if you've got a red pen with me, Draw a nice normal set of axes just for your tan graph. Can you do that? Not tan inverse, just the regular tan graph. And we need enough of this. We need enough of this graph to actually see the 5 pi on 6 that we're after. Okay, so I'm going to draw this much of it. Okay, so here's regular tan, yeah? You with me? 
Now, what I want to do with you is help to think through visually what I'd like your what picture I'd like your mind to call when you see this. Okay, when this comes into your mind, I want a picture to involuntarily appear. Just like when I say dog, you're like, I can't not picture a dog. Now, you've got a dog in your mind, right? I don't know what kind of dog it is, but you've got one there. You can't not picture it. I want this to become the reflex of your mind. Okay, let's take it one step at a time. Ten, five, pound, six. I'm going to start from the inside here. Why do you think that is? Why think about this guy first before I get to that? Hmm. What do you learn about order vibrations? Go back to your seven. Which kinds of things do you do first? You do well, what's at the front of that acronym? Bodmus. It's it's brackets, right? So you're gonna you're gonna look inside. You look the, the deepest part of it, and you say that's what I'm going to deal with first. Okay. So tan five pi on six. That's going to give me, you give me an angle, I'm going to get a ratio out. Okay? So where is 5 pi on 6 on this graph? Can you tell me where it is? You can point to it, right? Where would you like me to go? I'm, going to, I'm so going to wait for this because you guys can, t you can tell me where 5 pi on 6 is, right? Yeah, okay, I can see a few of you. I'm still not most of you. You have to start thinking in radians, right? Here's pi, 180 degrees. We already established that this is 150. So I'm pretty close over here. Are you okay with that? Right? So 5 pi on 6, that's where I'm going to place it. Okay? Now reach for your calculator for a moment. What I want to do is get a handle on what is this actual value. Okay? So when you put 10 5 pi on 6 into your calculator, it'll spit back some weird decimal rubbish. Right? Can you tell me what the decimal rubbish is? Because I'm kind of interested in it. What do you get? Negative. Now, before I write down the rest of the numbers, right, you should be relieved that you got a negative. Why? Look at the graph. Why does it have to be negative? Yeah, yeah, look at the spot that I'm on, right? When you go, oh, look, there's where the graph is intersecting. That's negative. Sure enough, thumbs up. And there was negative 5, 7, 7, 7, dot, 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 dot. Okay? So you're like, yeah, it's just a little bit below the axis. That's exactly what I expected. Now, some of you will be good enough with your ratios that you can tell me what the third is for this, right? Don't yell it out just yet. A lot of you will not be good enough because you're like, my head is spinning with all of these other things I'm trying to remember. So what's a nice way to find out what this third is if you do not remember? Does anyone remember the little trick? My, calcul my class knows it from last year with your calculator. If you square it, right? If you square both sides, go ahead, you've got your calculator there, right? This is in the display. You just hit square and then what do you get? You get a third, right? Now that's a bit sneaky and cheap, but what it does tell you is that the previous line, which is the square root of that, is going to be 1 on root 3, except we know there's a negative there, right? Um, when we squared that, we lost the fact that it was negative, but you wrote that down, you know that's what it is. So there, let's move the zero out of the way, there's negative 1 on root 3. Are you okay with that? All right. So therefore, what this really means is, what's tan inverse? of negative one on root three. Just pause for a second because a lot of you have not quite got this um, idea in your head. A regular trig ratio, trig function, you put in an angle and you get out a ratio, yes? Inverse trig does that in the opposite direction. You put in a ratio and you get out an angle, okay? So whatever the answer to this is, it'll be an angle, some pi on whatever, okay? So I want you to have a look. On this graph, there is an angle that has exactly the same value that is inside the domain I'm interested in, right? Can you see where it is? I've almost drawn all the way there, right? See that dotted line coming across? There it is, dot, 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 bam. That spot there, whatever this angle happens to be, will have the same, will give me the same negative one over three that I'm after, okay? And much better than the previous angle, it's inside this domain that I'm interested in. It's from negative pi on two to pi on two. Okay, so the last thinking point now is, well, what can I use about the property of this tan graph to get from here to here? What's the difference? What is this actual distance in here? You wanna tell me? It's gonna be pi radians, why is it pi? Yeah, the wavelength, or we're talking in, in rather than physical terms, in mathematical terms, we'd say the period of tan is pi radians, right? So therefore, you just have to rewind pi radians to get to there, which I think, if I'm doing my numbers right, that's negative, negative pi, on pi on six. And that's the answer that I'm after, okay? Now, 
That takes a lot longer. That thinking process takes a lot longer than just drawing a triangle or drawing some quadrants, okay? However, can you see how much it helped us to think about the inverse trig functions and what they're doing? It helps you understand the graph better. You cannot escape the graphs. So you might as well invest the time now to actually understand them better, okay?